As far as nations go, Malaysia is pretty unique. We have a rotating monarchy where a Yang Di Pertuan Agong is elected by the Majlis Raja Raja every five years. And at the same time, Malaysia is also a parliamentary democracy. But what is democracy and why or how did Malaysia become one? For starters, democracy literally means the rule of the people. This means that by voting for the representatives at both the federal and state levels, Malaysians have a say in how the country is run. All representatives on both federal and state levels are elected by the rakyat, so their position and power is neither set nor guaranteed. Your vote is valuable in keeping elected representatives in check, and what you do with your vote is for you to decide, but what matters is that you use it. Alternatively, if you are of age and fulfill the necessary criteria, you could also run for office yourself. However, democracy is not limited to the ballot box even if it's usually the first thing that comes to mind when democracy is mentioned. There are so many ways to get involved with the democratic process. The easiest way to start and the lowest level of engagement is to do so with your own local community. It can be something as simple as a monthly Gotong Royong project or a bigger long-term project such as advocating for a cause you believe in. Doing more and moving beyond your community is also possible and greatly encouraged. For example, you could join a district or state or national level youth organization or NGO. Youths can also participate in shaping opinions by creating spaces and joining these both online and off. Additionally, while being young means you can't actually participate in the real thing yet, it's possible to create and participate in a simulation of these political processes. You could engage with your peers via political education classes, workshops, forums, or programs such as Parliament Digital. It's also worth remembering that it's perfectly possible to hold your area's representatives accountable by calling, emailing, or engaging with them in person via their respective service centres or at community events. But why democracy exactly, though? Why not something else? Well, history, or primarily 20th century history, has shown that democracy has a set of rather desirable attributes that would appeal to most people, including how democracy prevents cruel and vicious autocrats from remaining in power, how modern representative democracies rarely fight wars with each other, and how democratically governed countries tend to be more prosperous. Other features of democracy include the guarantee of fundamental rights that non-democratic systems don't and cannot grant, as well as how the citizens of a democratic government generally have a more extensive range of personal freedoms. Democracy is not without its flaws, though, and may still be open to abuse. An off-cited flaw of democracy is the tyranny of the majority, where the majority systematically disadvantages or actively represses minorities in the country. But a safeguard within democracies for such abuse is usually enshrined in some form of legal protection or special rights over certain issues and matters pertaining to minorities. And as evidenced by the election of President Trump and the Brexit vote, it's certainly not immune to demagoguery, which are political activities or practices which seek people's appeal via exploiting their emotions and prejudices instead of rational argument. To prevent this, we need a citizenry that is educated, informed and capable of making rational decisions. To achieve this, all citizens should have access to all the information they need in order to make informed decisions for themselves. Remember, building a better democracy begins with you.